The keys I'm using are in the bottom right corner of the viewport. To make a low poly candle, I'll start with a cylinder. In edit mode, I inset the top face using the I key. Then using the E and Z keys, I'll extrude the face down along the Z axis. I can then scale the face along the X and Y axes. I then inset the face again, extruding and scaling the new face. I select a few faces around the top, and using proportional editing, which is the O key, I move the faces up along the Z axis. I can now select the edge loops using control left click. I can then add some bevels to the edges using control B. In object mode, I right click and choose Shade Smooth. Under the Object Data Properties tab, in the Normals panel, I activate Auto Smooth to fix any shading issues. Now that I'm done with the candle, I can add a simple wick. I'll add a simple bezier curve for the wick, rotating it using the R key and scaling it using the S key. After placing it into position in the Object Data Properties tab, under the Geometry panel, I add a bevel, making sure I also activate Fill Cap. I now right click on the wick and convert it to a mesh. In edit mode, I select the top faces and scale them along the X and Y axis. I then select the very top faces using the C key to access circle select.
I then extrude them with the E key and scale them to round out the end. I also add an edge loop using Control R and scale the loop along the X and Y axis. In object mode, I right click and shade the wick smooth. I have a flame that I extracted from a photo. The link is in the description. I have the import images as planes add-on activated in my preferences. Now I can use shift right click to move the 3D cursor to the top of the wick. I import the flame image and go into material preview mode so I can see the image. I rotate and scale the flame to the proper size. I then move the flame into position. In edit mode, I use the spin duplicates tool to duplicate and rotate the flame. using 20 steps and 360 degrees. I select the candle and open the shader editor. I add a new material to the candle. I don't need the principled shader, so I delete it and add a diffuse shader node. I change the roughness to 0.4. Now I can add a glossy shader node to add a reflection distribution to the material. I change the roughness to 0.2 to add a bit of blurriness to the glossy shader. I combine these two shader nodes with a mix shader. I can now change the factor to 0.7. This means that the diffuse or top shader will override the glossy shader. I add a subsurface scattering node. I combine the nodes with a second mix shader. And change the factor of the second mix shader to 0 0.2. I add an RBG node. And connect it to the diffuse and the glossy shader nodes and the subsurface scattering node. Now I can change the color on the RGB node. The color I'm using is C2A79A. I also add a noise texture node and connect the factor to the factor of the second mix shader. I can now change the options on the texture to achieve my preferred look.
I select the wick and add a material. I add a gradient texture node and connect it to the principal shader. To more easily control the gradient with the Node Wrangler add-on activated, I can select the gradient texture node and use Control T to add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. If I change the scale to 0.75, I now have a gradient that shows a more gradual tint transition from white to black. I can now add a color ramp between the gradient texture node and the principal shader. This will allow me to change the color of the gradients. I can move the color stops to make changes to the gradient. I can also choose a different blending mode on the gradient texture. For now, I'll be using easing as the blending mode. I can also add a simple material to the flame. I connect the color of the image texture to the emission of the principal shader. Under the Render Properties, I activate Bloom, changing the color to a yellow and increasing the intensity.